Okay, I have to admit, for a Miss Marvel costume, that's pretty cool. Like, why they didn't lead off with that type of costume for Miss Marvel, you know, Kamala Khan, when they first introduced her? I don't know. I mean, that's actually, I will admit, that's actually not a bad looking costume. You're also probably wondering, why am I reviewing Avengers again? Well, the reason why I'm reviewing Avengers again is because, one, last time I spent a considerable amount of time talking about Square Enix's unnecessary focus on a non-Avenger, in my opinion. I know some people may feel that Kamal Khan is an Avenger. I don't personally think of her when someone says Avengers. I mean, I think of She-Hulk before I think of Kamala Khan. But, that being said, I did spend a almost half of the last video criticizing the decision to have Kamala Khan as the headliner for the entire game. And while some people may not have liked that, it was a rant I needed to get out of my system. And so only half the video was able to be spent on other aspects of the game. But, that being said, this is a live service game. And so they're constantly adding new stuff, and my review is eventually probably going to be obsolete because they might have fixed some of those issues I had with the first review when I did my first review of the game. And so I felt it was probably a good idea to do reviews of the free DLC, even though they're free. I mean, if you have this game, this DLC is going to be free. And... So, it seems unnecessary for me to go over with you the free DLC. Because if you already have the game, you're going to get the DLC for free. But, it is a way of me doing updated reviews on this live surface game without having to do The Avengers Video Game Review Part 2. The Avengers Video Game Redo. You know, stuff like that. So, now that you know why I'm reviewing a free piece of DLC, I'm going to get into it now. Okay, so this piece of DLC is the Marvel's of Federal's Taking Aim DLC. This was the first DLC that was released for the game Avengers. And ultimately, I did enjoy this free piece of DLC, but it has its problems. And the first one. And I cannot stress to you the ridiculous nature of this first issue. Every level or every mission in this free DLC pack, you have to be online to start it. Now, you can get offline once you start it. You can stop the game, go into the settings, get your system offline and play it and finish the game. No problem. But try starting another level Oh, nope, you have to be online to stop this. Well, I'm just going up against AI bots. You still have to be online to start this. Why? I can start every campaign mission offline. Doesn't matter, you have to be online to start this offline playable DLC mission. It's not even that the mission won't even play offline. You can play this entire campaign offline. Just once you start it, you can get offline and it will let you finish the mission offline. Why? Why is that there? You can play this offline. I have done it. Just, you have to be online to start it. It's the stupidest thing ever. Why would they do that? Why? 
So, yeah, so that's annoying as freaking hell. And for some weird reason, you go into Kate Bishop's room on the helicarrier, and right there on the bed spoils the ending of her entire campaign mission. When I went in there after, like, the first mission, I want to check out her room, see what it looked like. And I was like, huh, this is interesting. And I look at her bed, it's like, what's that? Why is that there? I had no idea what I was looking at. And then when I finished the campaign, it's like, oh, so that spoiled the end of the campaign. Why would Square Enix do that? It makes no sense. It really doesn't make any sense. It's as stupid as... Having to be online just to start the mission, but you can play the mission offline. Now, credits, credits do. I absolutely loved the way they had this set up where the DLC, the Kate Bishop DLC, adds a new chapter onto the end of the original campaign. So it makes the game feel like an ongoing comic book series, which I just absolutely loved, okay? Her new story segment felt like the opening chapters to The Avengers 2, like a sequel to the first game, all right, which is really awesome because it's not just like, oh, the story's over, it's not, no, it has a continuation. It continues into part three, which came out after this, all right, and so that aspect I absolutely love. I just wish Square Enix would have added a couple more enemy variations, alright? Like my first review, Marvel is filled with so many different variations of enemies for every character, and they only have like four to six variations in this game. Now yes, they introduced the new boss in part two, so that's nice. Only seen it once, but now we have Abomination, um, Taskmaster, this new boss, and I think that's really about it. Uh, but, you know, so it's improving. Credit credits do, it's improving. In terms of Kate Bishop, the new character, the new adventure, I enjoy playing as her. Don't get me wrong. Just her character is kind of annoying and an asshole and unlikable. Um, you know, it's cute when you say, okay, but don't drag me back the first time. But when you keep shoving it in characters' faces that like, okay, just don't hold me back. Okay, don't slow me down. Okay, I don't want to have to carry you all. And you're saying this to Captain America, Hulk, Thor, and Iron Man. I'm sorry, that's really freaking irritating and annoying, okay? You're good. You're not that good, okay? You're talking to literally a untainable rage machine, a national symbol, a genius intellect, and a alien god, whatever you want to call him. And somehow you're better than all that, okay? Um, it'd be funny if you did it once as a joke, but I mean... No, she really comes off as a huge asshole in this game, and it's just like, okay, I mean, I'm enjoying playing her, but just please stop trying to be funny. It, it, you're just coming off as the asshole, man. But no, much more enjoyable to play as than, you know, the walking ripoff. Um, at least, like, you know, some may go, isn't she just a ripoff of Hawkeye? Well, Hawkeye was her mentor, plus she can teleport. Hawkeye can't. And so it's like, okay, and the teleporting is a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, I, I really enjoy teleporting around the game. It's just like, okay, that that's cool. Kind of at times feels a little bit like Deadpool in terms of her moveset. She doesn't have guns, so not quite Deadpool, but a little bit like Deadpool, especially with her samurai sword and whatnot. Now, another downside to this DLC is the challenge card. In the campaign, the challenge card you could just work at at your own pace. But in this Kate Bishop's challenge card, you can unlock half of it by playing her online, but the other half you can't unlock unless you spend a thousand credits to unlock that second portion of the challenge card. 
So it's just another sleazier way to try to get real cash out of you to unlock that. And um, yeah, I don't like it. I mean, just let him have the same challenge card that every other character has. Okay, stop this nonsense. So ultimately, did I enjoy the Taking Aim DLC? Uh, yes, the story was good. I really love where the story's going. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm glad that we have a new character onto the Avengers. It's weird that they didn't have Hawkeye first, then her, but in terms of the story, it does make a little bit sense. And so, yeah, I mean, it's great free DLC, and they did make some improvements to the overall Avengers game. So, I uh, gotta give it credit there. Uh, I am looking forward to the next DLC, and I'm especially looking forward to the new Black Panther DLC that they announced. Uh, so, until next time, my name is Chris with 11 Hour Reviews, and that is all for now.